times. So you try to hold that in your concentration for five breaths, and you think, oh, that sounds easy. But it's not so easy if you've never done a concentration practice before. It's surprisingly difficult. So, and make, make them long breaths as well. Don't <laughs> But concentration, this vivid imagination, it, that's what it does. It develops the, our imagina imaginative capacities, which is something that's needed. He even recommends doing, in some Western esoteric schools, I guess pi more Pythagorean schools, they would, um, they would, instead of concentrating on a thing, they would visualize like a shape. So they'd start with platonic solids. They'd go like the circle, and then they'd go to like a triangle, and then to a cube, and then so they'd concentrate on the shapes. Or you could even concentrate on a pentagram or something, and then go on to like another shape, or maybe an esoteric symbol, and perhaps that can help you unfold, or maybe connects you to some kind of knowledge, or you're given some kind of knowledge in the astral, which has happened to me before. It's very, it can be very interesting. This is a part of, you could say, esoteric investigation. You're not just reading books in the physical, you're actually trying to gain knowledge through the non-physical means, this very profound thing. So, it's just five breaths, concentration, that's this, you know, imagination, which is the beginning of true clairvoyance, really. And this is, that, uh, that helps, basically, because it's, you know, it's airy. It helps us uh, open the filter, open the gate of Gemini. And then the energy flows down into Cancer, which is the next month. Cancer being very feminine, about growth. In this, it's the chest. So in this month, we focus on the chest. Cromhella recommends that you, like, you wake up in the morning and when you do this practice you get like cold water and you dab it on your chest before doing the meditation. Uh, but he basically just says, in this um, point we focus on a marriage of those forces in the chest. Because this is, yes there's Leo which comes next, but the chest is where the celestial forces end. They don't necessarily go any deeper. We actually go here and there's just a center of gravity that builds up in us, in a, the chest region. So we're preparing this region by trying to mix those higher and lower forces, which you symbolize, you could say, by a, a triangle pointing up and a triangle pointing down. And so you visualize, you use your concentration, your imaginative faculty, which you've developed in the previous month, to imagine a hexagram on your chest. And so you do this and the, just imagine that on your chest and the sign of uh, cancer. And that opens the gate of cancer. And in the next month, is very interesting. Leo is very interesting because of the symbolism and what happens. Because if you noticed as well, we've gone through four signs and they've all been uh, the four elements. Aries, fire, Taurus, earth, Gemini, air, and Cancer, water. So we have all four elements. And so this can create an alchemical, you know, astral combustion within us. Something can crystallize. So with the solar force of Leo, this is a kind of the settling of something. This is the, I mean, Aries maybe is the beginning and then it caps off with Leo, which is fire again. And so it creates a center within us. There's this idea of like a permanent center of gravity, or as Carl Jung would say, it's an individuation, which is to create a center within us that's permanent, that continuously, you could say, transmutes the subconscious into consciousness. How the alchemists would have said it is, they, when they use the language of fixed gold, they say, you need to fix your gold. What is gold? Gold is connected to the sun, to light, to shining. I remember when there's a, another Rosicrucian called Max Heindel, and it said when he, he had like a massive experience once, he became very sick, and he was taken out of his body and taken into the middle of Europe and into an astral temple, and there were these like masters who presented themselves to him, but he said, the one in the middle who was the leader, he couldn't see his face because there was light coming out of his face, just shining, and it looks like he had a star just where his face should be. And so he like just couldn't he couldn't look at him. And that's very I kind of imagine that as kind of a symbol of like the higher self almost. That's what our higher self would look like. Just you know, it's just so much I know glory or light because things that are of a higher quality, we like to think of angels and think of naked babies with wings. But some higher, higher things that are spiritual can be quite, not, I would, you know, the, in, uh, in sacred texts they often use terrifying, but terrifying isn't horrifying, you know, there's horrifying, horrific, terrific, terrifying, you know, <laughs> there's the wordplay there, but 
they have a majestic, like a, a sublime connotation to them. So in Leo, what's happening is you could say we're crystallizing maybe or like a part of the higher self is really coming into us. Leo, like Leos themselves, this is, it's said that the main defect of a Leo is pride. But why? Leo is about 